of the view out the game room window. And that's uh, some artwork I found in the trash. And it's time uh, for a coffee with Earl with uh, Golden Finch Fellow. Or is it Goldfinch Fellow? Let's find out. That's Golden Finch Fellow. Hey, Golden Finch. Thanks for the video response. Uh, I would have gone out and rode around on my bike to join you, but uh, I've been sick for like uh, like seven days now. I feel tons better, but uh, I'm not going to go do anything I don't have to today. You're riding your bike around without any brakes, man. If I was, uh, as, as your friend, Golden, um, I deeply encourage you to do all you can to get some brakes on that. I think just a steed is, is happier with brakes. It makes the bike more complete. It's like, you know, uh, I don't know, I think it's, there's something uh, visually missing, uh, as well as I like a piece of equipment that's all of one, you know? I was always a big fan of the best brakes you could get, uh, though I never liked disc brakes. Um, and uh, really good tires. Oh, and uh, fantastic boots. Let me show you the boots uh, that I love. Look at those bad boys. Those are more than boots. Those are like when you fall asleep and dream of boots. That's what you dream of. Uh, it feels like your feet are on vacation in those things. They're awesome. I want to wear them to bed. Mm, well, thanks for your uh, video response. Thanks for joining me for coffee. And uh, a brief story of no breaks. Um, one of my co-workers, and I have to say that uh, I didn't like him that much. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he, did, he rode uh, at work, he rode his bike without any brakes. And uh, he actually he wore, uh, what are they called, Keds? You know, they're rubber soled uh, with a thin cotton thing across the top of them um, for shoes. And he would hold his foot up against his front wheel to brake. Except for one day, he's uh, you know, traveling way too fast down the road for a bike with no brakes. Car pulls out in front of him. He really. He realizes his normal method of stopping. Oh, it was, it was raining out too. His normal method of stopping wasn't going to work because his feet were wet, the tires were wet, and so he just thought he'd just stomp down uh, on, on his uh, on the ground and do a Fred Flintstone break, and uh, that didn't work. Uh, his feet caught underneath his pedals and uh, drug his feet upside down. Um, you know, wedged between his uh, pedal and the street and then scraped with the momentum of his bike, which actually didn't go very far because he then went straight into the car that he was trying to avoid. Um, and good luck for them claiming that on insurance. <laughs> um, so he came, he came to me uh, after it happened and uh, he, he, he had radioed it in and uh, so other messengers came. They wanted to talk to him about it, and uh, you know, I was like, I was kind of like in a pit um, as I was dispatching, and so I was in a circular uh, kind of uh, desk. And as he came in, and he's just laughing. He thinks it's the funniest thing in the world, um, and he's you know, almost bragging about it. And other messengers are laughing with him. And as he's laughing it off, I notice he kind of sways a little bit. And I said, Hey, why don't you come around here and sit down on my chair? And he comes and sits down and. He's like he's like in the center of attention thing, and uh, I kind of uh, I kind of crouch down in front of him, and I'm like, "Are you sure you're okay?" And he's like, "Yeah, I mean, my my foot st my foot stings a little bit," and I look down, and uh, where his big toe uh, would be in the shoe, actually, there's no fabric right above his big toe, and I said, "Did you just wear right through the fabric here?" And he's like, "Yeah," and he laughs, and as he's laughing. He lifts up his toe, and uh, there's a lot of blood in his shoe. And as he lifts up his toe, you don't see his toe. Uh, blood just comes out, um, and he faints dead away. 
but I don't know this. I'm like, hey, I, I think that I better take a look at your foot. Um, can I take your shoe off? And he doesn't say anything. I said, can I take your shoe off? And I push him back a little bit. And he's fainted. And I kind of look around at everybody else, because I've never seen that before. And everyone else has seen the blood, watched him faint, and as a, almost as a man, everyone took a step away from him. And then I laughed. <laughs> and so I took his shoe off and uh, his sock off, and I wiped all the blood off with his sock. Um, and it was like the really, uh, it was like it was like some road rash uh, on past the nail on the on the end of his uh, toe, and uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, it just, you know, he had been bleeding for like a half an hour, however long it took him to, to get there. So it's the end of his shoe filled up with blood. Uh, and so I, ban I bandaged it up. And, uh, and then uh, that, the story of my laughing at his fainting, when I was really just kind of laughing about how uh, everyone took a step back, um, got around, and I was, I was criticized quite soundly for it. And I'm like, hey... I may have laughed, but I washed that guy's bloody foot, <laughs> you know, so you gotta, you gotta balance some things, you know. I thought it was funny, and he was okay, so. And he was laughing up a storm right before he fainted, too, so. I mean, laughter was in the air. Mmm. Well, it, uh, it just became uh, fodder for the anti-Earls, uh, the anti-Earl religion. Uh, that sprung up around me when I was a, uh, a bike messenger dispatcher. Um, so, you know, there are some truths to the anti earl stories, but I just think that... Uh, <laughs> I just think you would have laughed, too, if you would have seen all their faces. Um, all right, well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks for taking uh, us and me for a, a ride, and uh, get some brakes on that bike. Goodness gracious. Oh, and Congratulations on an excellent set of boots. I like that you are renting boots. All right, let's take a uh, let's take a look at the winter view. Thanks for joining me for coffee, and I'll see you in the tubes. <laughs>